I'm gonna try to beat the radioactive Pokemon game, Pokemon Uranium. This is a fan-made game which transforms the wonderful world of Pokemon we all know and love into a nuclear wasteland filled with death, destruction, new Pokemon, and even a new type. Zip up your hazmat suits for this one because it's gonna be a wild ride. Let's get into it. The game began with a flashback to 10 years ago where I learned that my mother died in a nuclear accident and so I was sent to live with my auntie in Moki Town and here is where my adventure began. I left my room and I discovered the wild world of the Tandori region which looks awesome. I'm ready to go explore. I bumped into my interesting looking rival and then made it to the professor's lab where it was time to pick my starter. Alright, so I guess if we go with the red text, we're gonna get a fire type Pokemon. So hey, let's try it out. Darkrai. And we got our starter. We got a Raptorch. That thing looks really cool. With him by my side, it's time to get going. I destroyed my rival Theo, learned to catch some new sick Pokemon and had my first trainer battle. And after taking him down, I made it through Kevlar Town and into this cave where I decided to catch my first Pokemon. A Dunsparce? Wait, what? There's no way we're getting you. There we go. That's what I'm gonna catch. Catch. Can we get our first Pokemon? Yes, there we go. We caught a Grozard. Together with my newly formed team, I found my first major city. At the first gym, this creepy dude gave me one of the multiple keys he has to the gym leader's house, which got me thinking. Wait, what? Okay, I'm just not gonna ask. So after breaking into her house and forcing her to come battle me at the gym, I made some final preparations and took on the first gym. And I now understand why she just sleeps all day. Okay, how did this girl used to be the champion of Tandori? Anyways, the first gym badge was now ours and it was time to keep moving. After bumping into Theo, I learned how to break rocks, I talked to the professor and then kept going. I found a beautiful beach, tropical trees and some cool clams on the way to the second gym. But I'm seeing a severe lack of nuclear radiation so far, so let's keep going. After making it through this vast forest, I finally arrived in Barol Town and I wasted no time on my quest to get radiation poisoning and I took on the second gym leader, who handed me my second gym badge. Well, at least eventually. Next up on my adventure, I crossed this massive bridge and found some very interesting Pokemon. Wait a minute, what is that thing? Oh, get that off my screen. Uh, yeah, let's just ignore that and move on. After some wandering around in the grass, I found my next teammate. Wait, you know what? I think I'm gonna catch you. That Pokemon looks really cool. Please, dude, I'm running out of Pokeballs. Just get in one. Oh, thank you. After wasting about four years and about 300 Pokeballs catching that thing, I continued on through this cave with Theo by my side. And this cave was full of some horrifying creatures. Ew, there's two of them. I then bumped into this cute sign with some weird text on it. Ah. Oh. Imagine being able to read. I continued on through this cave and was hit by a massive earthquake. Maybe it's finally time to unveil some clues about the radiation seeping through this land. And just as I was about to enter this room, my teammate ditched me and left me out here alone. Anyways, turns out the earthquakes were caused by the stupid snake, so let's keep going for now. I kept traveling through the cave and then this route and then finally made it to Rockvale Town where I found this cool lab I wanted to explore. But turns out it had a note on it saying temporarily closed due to an emergency. Huh, I wonder what happened here. Well, let's ignore that and just keep moving for now. I left the lab but was quickly stopped by Professor Bamboa who took us back inside and informed the lab had been robbed. I also found out they developed a Pokemon to human translation device which allowed me to track down the thief. I explored Route 6 in the middle of the night where these Pokemon tried to tell me to get out. No humans allowed. Are you gonna try to stop me? Dude, I could stomp on you if I wanted to. You are not gonna stop me. I then bumped into this literal clove of garlic who was a self-proclaimed Pokemon hero and was here to stop me from enslaving even more Pokemon. Yeah, not gonna happen, bro. Okay, I may have lost once or twice, but that's not the point. But hey, at least my snake boy evolved along the way. I then got cheered on for saving all these Pokemon and I kept going. I once again found myself in a tunnel, but I quickly made it through. I arrived on this beach where I made a cool discovery. Beach Pokemon! Yo! I love that! I love that you can find Pokemon on the beaches in this game. I think that's an awesome concept. I loved it so much that I picked up this snail I found on the beach and took him along us for this adventure. Although maybe I shouldn't have caught him because... No, he's another ground type. Oh well. But anyways, after taking on this little kid, I found this captain who let me know that another nuclear plant is being built even after what happened to the last. I mean, when has history ever repeated itself, right? But hey, I finally made it to this beautiful beach town where I finally got to see my dad for the first time in this run. Wait a minute, is that you dad? I thought you were getting milk. 
But after visiting the city's gym, I was tasked with visiting the nuclear power plant. I hope it's finally time to uncover some of the secrets of what's happening in Tandori. In the middle of this dark, rainy night, I was finally tasked with visiting the old ruined power plant, with the hopes of getting some closure as to what happened to my mother, Lucille. I was also informed that some of these Pokemon will be, well, different, so let's go see what he meant by that. It didn't take too long to find out, as this is who I found hiding in the grass. Yo, wait a minute. I saw this same Pokemon on the other island, but it wasn't green and it wasn't shining. Wait, let's go find another one. Yo, okay. So these are the new nuclear Pokemon. You know what? I think I want to try and catch one. I definitely wanted to catch myself a nuclear type, but the time for that will come. After a bit of wandering around, I finally found the ruined power plant. Let's go see what awaits us on the inside. The facility was really dark and full of notes scattered around, but I wasn't finding what I was looking for. Information on what happened to my mother. What I did find, though, was a room where the explosion had happened all that time ago. And as I was checking it out, I fell through a hole in the door and fell into the basement where this Pokemon actually tried to kill me. I then passed out due to radiation poisoning, but luckily, my rival's dad saved me last minute. I really wonder what's going on down there. I hope we get to find out later, but for now, we're just gonna have to keep on going. After some training, my team went through some sick evolutions, and with this powerhouse of a team, I was ready to keep on going. I sailed back to Beale Beach City, where I visited the third gym leader, Kelly, who gave us our third gym badge. After leaving the gym, I got hit by another earthquake, which turned out to be at yet another power plant. I was told to escape to safety and on my way out of the island I ran into a nuclear Pokemon on the mainland which I hadn't seen before. Something must be seriously wrong right now. I even bumped into this absolute monster. Hold on a minute. Is that a nuclear Gyarados? Alright. But after taking that out, I quickly left the island on this luxury cruise and arrived on the wheat fields of Route 8, where I decided to bring a familiar face along this journey with us. There we go, we caught a mischievous. Next up, I quickly visited Vinoville City where Sheldon gave me my fourth gym badge. And after leaving the gym, I got hit by perhaps the 50th earthquake, but this time something was different. Radiation started falling from the sky and we had to get out of there as soon as possible. And on the way out, this is what we saw. The nuclear power plant exploded again, but this time the Theo's dad was there, but once again I wasn't allowed to explore so I guess we just gotta keep on going. Next up I took down some Pokemon and caught myself a nuclear Gligar which honestly looks amazing. Yes we got it! We got our first nuclear Pokemon, that's awesome. I then took the train to Barol City and continued on my adventure. I traveled through the Baikal Rainforest, made it through this ominous cave and found myself a crown just lying around in the jungle. Well I eventually made it to Amatree Town which had a bunch of weird traits. They even had this lovely welcoming sign. After talking to this gym worker, I was told to go save the gym leader. You'd think he could take care of himself. Anyways, after scaring away these spiders, I jumped down a few holes and made it to the heart of this den, where I had to take on this spider queen, and although she looked awesome, she went down quickly enough. And as you can probably guess after that, getting the fifth gym was no challenge. After receiving surf from Theo, I swam through these swamps, surfed the vast ocean, <laughs> and arrived in Venice City, where I wasted no time and went right for the gym badge, which I of course secured. Only two gym badges left to go but we still have a lot to uncover so let's keep going. On the way to the next city I found this very sussy Pokemon, surfed through this cave, surfed through another ocean and made it to Silverport Town. I didn't stay here for long though as I went straight to the Lanthanite Cave and ended up in this winter wonderland. I spent like 30 minutes trying to figure out this puzzle before finally giving up and just giggling it. I swear, the nuclear radiation from this game is melting my brain. I did somehow make it to Snowbank Town though where once again there was no signs of radiation. It's been too long since we progressed in the plot so let's do that right now. After messing up on this dumb puzzle about 300 times, I finally made it past and earned myself the 7th gym badge. We also unlocked Mega Evolution here which I used to absolutely destroy Theo. Professor Bamboy then tasked me with taking on the 8th and final gym leader, but he also mentioned of another power plant nearby that hasn't had any issues yet. I hope you knocked on wood, Professor, because I don't like where this is heading. Well, at this point, I guess I have no choice. I sailed back to Venice and started my journey for the final gym. I dove through the depths of the ocean and finally arrived in Tsukinami Village, whose art style looks beautiful. I didn't want to get risk getting hit by another nuclear explosion, so I got the 8th gym over with as fast as I could. It went super well and the gym leader even had a mega whimsy cut. What a chad. After leaving the final gym with a full case of gym badges, I got a word from some rangers that the last power plant in Tandori was under attack. Who would have guessed? Let's go see what's up. After taking out the hostile nuclear Pokemon surrounding the power plant, it was finally time to go inside. Or at least so I thought. After regrouping with the rangers, I found out it was too late as these Pokemon destroyed the power plant.
We tried to take it down with the help of the rangers, but it wasn't enough as they had just enough time to escape. After visiting my father in the hospital after that accident, I found out that Urain was a man-made Pokemon controlled by someone in that weird looking suit. We need to find out who's at the bottom of this right now. With the newly developed hazard suit to protect myself from radiation, it was time to go take down Urain. The air around here was full of thick nuclear mist, but I had no choice but to push forwards. I took down a couple Pokemon along the way, caught this nuclear chicken and made it to the entrance of the power plant. But right Right as I was about to enter, Urain found me and transported me deep into the chambers of this power plant. Right now I have two goals, which are to save Theo and take down Urain. And there is no way he's surviving in here for long, so we need to get right to work. I started off by turning on the backup generator and supplying electricity to the plant. I then healed up my Pokemon, finished all the tasks, and it all led up to this. After being given only 5 minutes to make it through the lab, I finally made it to the depths of the lab and found Urain for a final showdown. I managed to take it down, but just like last time, they vanished into thin air. And just like that, the world seemed to be saved. But something just doesn't feel right, and I can't put my finger on what it is at this moment. But we'll just have to wait and see as to what happens. For now though, my next goal was the Elite Four. I traveled through the Victory Road, crossed this bridge, explored this volcano, and made it to the edge of the Elite Four for our final challenge. It started off as any Pokemon League would. I battled some leaders, took some wins and losses, and all seemed good. Until I realized I can't use any items in battle. But I mean, that wasn't too bad. I did it eventually and I made it to the champions arena for the final battle. I was fully prepared to take down the champion, but not this nuclear legendary Pokemon. Wait, what? I thought Tandori was free from radiation. This must mean Urain's not gone. Out of nowhere, nuclear mist surrounded the stadium and it kept getting thicker and thicker until Urain finally came back and this time he looked a lot different. Even the battle stadium was a complete nuclear wasteland. But after an intense battle, it finally went down and the face behind the mask of Urain's Pokemon trainer was revealed. And after all this time, what I thought ended up being true. It was my mother, Lucille, who had lost her mind after years of mind control via her Curie suit. And just as soon as this run had started, it was already over as I was crowned the champion of Tandori. What a run. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Comment down below on what you want to see next, and I'll see you guys later.